Good morning, everybody, and welcome to IGTV. This is a production of New York City InfraGuard, and we're with Eugene Biederman from Good Technology. All right, uh, he's the director of public sector technology for the company. And uh, today you're going to be talking about four types of BYOD out there. Why don't you get right into that? Uh, those four types. Sure. Uh, so, from my own personal experience with dealing with customers quite a bit, um, I've kind of discovered that bring your own device, the BYOD acronym can actually mean four different things depending on who you talk to. So, it's typically, of course, the most common is bring your own device. Um, I've heard bring your own data. Bring your own disaster was a recent one. And, of course, my favorite is bring your own demise. Um, so, depending on who you talk to, the user, the CIO, the CISO, that's kind of how they all think about BYOD. Okay, and um, tell us more about bringing in your own device. Uh, successes, maybe not successes, cost savings and, and enhancements and other concerns. Sure, sure. So, um, again, from my personal experience, it's been very successful in the private sector. There's been numerous reports on uh, the various cost savings, enhanced uh, uh, productivity, you know, the, the large return on investment. It's been uh, also very successful in the state and local agencies because um, obviously they're a little bit more cash strapped and they're always looking for ways to cut costs. And um, I think BYOD has been very, bring your own device has been very successful for them. Uh, it's still not very proven in the federal space. Um, so on the civilian side, I would say maybe 10 to 15% of civilian agencies are dabbling with it. I know that they're trying to create a formal policy around BYOD or bring your own device. On the DOD side, it's still just a thought or a vision for the future. I don't think they're ready to do it. Um, from a cost savings perspective, of course, it's, it's huge cost savings, right? So imagine no longer going out and procuring devices and data plans for your fleet of users. You're now expecting them to pay it. Some companies stipend back the user uh, for the data usage uh, or voice usage, and they typically just pay for the licensing of the security product that you know, controls it, not controls the device, but locks down and secures enterprise data you know on, on that device right um, some concern that we've seen around bring your own device um, of course is every enterprise is always sensitive about their own data and you know will it get kind of leaked into the commercial space uh, especially with these consumer smartphones they make it so easy for the user to synchronize between their email their social media cloud services you know of course everybody every CISO's fear is you know they don't want their sensitive data to end up you know, on Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or something like that, right? Um, the other one, of course, is the inverse of that, which is the privacy aspect, right? So if it's a user's personal device, they really don't want to be tracked on what they do outside of work. So, um, you know, they're always, there's always a lot of sensitivity about how far, you know, uh, what's the limit for the enterprise or IT to have visibility into that user's personal device. Um, from our experience, of course, mobile device management has been something that, um, is looked at as an obvious solution. It's the biggest uh, term in the industry, and um, it doesn't actually solve the potential spillage issue or the privacy issue. I think it actually enhances it further because it's more of a, hey, let me control the entire device type of aspect. Uh, what we've seen as a successful model is um, this containerization of, of corporate data or government data, you know, isolate that data, secure that data, monitor and control that data, and let the user do whatever they want outside of that container. So this whole containerization uh, that your uh, that good technology puts out there is is kind of unique in the industry. Uh, we haven't seen this out there in, in a lot of other companies, and it's something that uh, that good is very well known for. Correct? Yeah, absolutely. Um, ironically, you know, our architecture has been the same for ten years. You know, ever since the Palm Trio days, we've always had a secured application on the device that isolates this data. It's only now that it's become more of a buzz with bring your own device. And, and to be honest, we're not the only vendor. What we've seen is a lot of the other vendors in the space that traditionally started with mobile device management are now looking at trying to do containerization because they see that mobile device management doesn't solve these problems. So they're looking at containerization. And I think we just had a, a little bit of a head start and uh, you know, obviously working very closely with the federal government has given us the ability to ensure that not only do we uh, provide a, a great model to do it, but we also provide a, a great security framework behind it to ensure uh, we can meet you know stringent requirements in various regulated verticals. All right, everybody, uh, we're going to take a short break here. We're with uh, Eugene Lederman uh, from Good Technology, and we'll be right back uh, with uh, a concentration on bring your own device, and uh, just we'll be back right after this commercial. <laughs> 